So this morning we woke up again to the conversation of our engine again and basically we're still going on where to fix the engine, where to replace the engine, where to go electric, where to go purist with no engine at all, where to stick an outboard on the back and with a whole bunch of pros and cons of each one. I mean, yes, now we have made super advancements in electric engines, the batteries are getting better, the engines are more powerful. Pro number one is no more diesel. Pro number two, it's a lot more environmentally friendly, even though the whole aspect of batteries is still a question. Pros is that it kind of gives you an autonomy that diesel engine you know, don't, so you always have to end up going to buy diesel and stuff. The pros I think would almost be costs. I think they are getting a lot cheaper every year. I mean, in a couple of years, they're going to probably cost a quarter of what a diesel engine costs. The pros, are, have the pros are no more oil changes, the pros are no more oil filters, less seacocks on your boat, less systems, less exhaust. That's two holes you have to do, have less in your boat. The noise is also a pro. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a proper insulated uh, engine room and electric engine, you are literally silent. Which can also be a con, because I've almost hit boats before and the only reason I didn't is because I, I heard the engines. Like, like, oh, there's a boat around me. Oh, shit, I'm about to hit somebody. Like, like I, I've literally almost run into fishermen before, especially in Asia. And the only reason I didn't is because it just, just started the engine all of a sudden. I'm like, whoa, there's a boat in front of me. They had no lights. They were just sitting there fishing. And the only reason I didn't end up, you know, T-boning them is because I heard the engine and veered off at the last second. I was just stopped. I mean, yeah. But it is a, it's a pro and a con. Because we're building the system from scratch, yes. everything's new. Everything is what we understand, and as long as we do the Uma route, I'm, I'm calling it the Uma route because yeah. I can't I can't think People of anybody else. Is. Well, anyways, the Uma route is you buy your own engine, you buy your own components, you assemble a system from essentially scratch. They didn't; they're not one of those electric en engine systems that a website is offering out there, yeah. right? There are companies there are quite a few companies now that make electric engines. It's basically a buy and install and you have no idea what is in it. They just say, oh, you just plug your batteries here, you bolt the, 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 the engine where your engine was, and voila, you, you're ready to go. Yeah. But you have no experience in installing. Until you might be forced. Until you might be forced to fix something, then you yeah. have to. My biggest con with electric engine right now is that water and Electronics. electricity don't yeah. mix very well, and especially short water, and where your diesel engine is, is always a damp, Wet place. So one other thing you need to get is a dry shaft because you cannot have a drip a drip shaft and an electric engine that close together. Even if the pump water gets pumped or moves away, it just yeah. salty air will kill any electric engine. Yeah. Unless the water cooled. I've heard the water cool ones are pretty good because they're actually a sealed unit. It's a system that you build over time. So like right now, the problem is is that we don't have three thousand dollars just sitting but like there. My still main concern is, and it has happened to most boats I know. And one day something happens and you come in and there's water in your boat. And if that happens, you basically just lost your engine. While I personally have seen a diesel engine run underwater. Like, yeah. completely submerged, boat sinking and... Rosa's engine was underwater at some point. Yeah, Rosa's engine was underwater for years. And we just cranked it up and the thing started. It might be rusty and smoky and whatever, but... I think no gasoline engine, no outboard, no electric engine will ever beat the, how do you call it, the, the tenacity of, of a good old diesel engine. I mean, with a few spare parts on your boat, it means you can fix it yourself most of the time. And I think it, it more or less comes to what you use your boat. I still think that electric engines are the way to go. If you, if you go cruise, if you just go out, cruise, come back, you know, you just need your 20 minutes of propulsion to get in and out. I think they're the way to go right now. You know, they're still, they're cheaper than diesel engines because you need you don't need 15 batteries. You give yourself two batteries, a, a reduced engine. You know, you just use it for docking. And yes, but I don't think we have managed to come to the point where electric is at least on a monohull, an old heavy monohull, is the way to go for long-term cruising. And then what? I, let's say you're in Fiji, Vanuatu, and an electric engine breaks down. You're stuck there waiting for parts to be imported, and it takes months and I mean, while a diesel engine, literally, you, you always will find some, you know, greasy old guy somewhere, you know, with a spanner that something will, will come up, you know. You can always tear a puff from another engine. You can always, you know, 
like there is some conformity with these engines around the world i mean yeah you might be able you know to find some part that oh it doesn't exactly fit but the engine will still run with it i mean it takes quite a lot to make a diesel engine not run as long as you have fuel air and compression the engine will run i mean we were just talking about you know if you are get into really deep shit, and we can think about one time where we were out near Montserrat yeah, Island it, in uh, in the Sea of Cortez, yeah, where that, you just sometimes need to gun it. You just sometimes just need to be like, pedal to the metal. Yeah. And at this point, that's and we barely made it out that day. I mean, it was a tropical paradise, and then it all turned to shit. We were anchored between two little reefs, two little islands, and we just got the hell out of there. Even without diesel engine, that was. Properly sized to a boat, we barely made it out that day. I mean, against the wind and waves, when, and even even most most boats, these engines, when you're pounding against the wind and the waves, you're pretty much stopped. I mean, I went out with Aquaman that day, and we barely made it out the exit. Yeah, we, that we, was a that's a good example too. Yeah, on it took, a boat it took we've three waves to stop the boat from five knots to zero knots at, yeah. at, an, at an exit. I mean, at an at entrance to the canal where. Yeah, if, you, if the boat stops, you cr you crash into a rock immediately. Yeah. Which brings us back to the situation yeah. with this engine here, which is, I mean, we're pretty, we're feeling pretty, uh, what, down? No, we're feeling pretty no, I'm intimidated I'm, by I'm this. Not I'm, 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 I'm a little like, I know this engine personally will never give me peace of mind. And they will be able to be like, oh, let's just go across the Pacific, I'll feel fine. No, you know, I, I don't want to like pray every time I need to turn the key on. Like, I don't want... To, there's a whole bunch of things. I mean, the like most that cruisers that will know that you know turning when you turn the key and the engine starts, it really makes you feel good. And I think that's very important. Like to know that when you're in a sticky situation, you want your diesel engine to fire. I mean, it's a must. <laughs> yeah, or you go the the Nanji route and you and you just buy us an engine. I don't know how that. Well, they 50-50. I mean, they bought and then they had people help them buy the engine. Because of our location, I'm not quite expecting a diesel engine to just arrive at our door. So I started to explore the options for how to uh, start assembling an electric engine. There are several companies with websites that will set you up with an electric engine kit or plug-and-play unit. We came across some fellow sailing channels that have installed these engines. These prices do not include the solar array and batteries necessary to complete the installation, so you can add several hundred or even thousands of dollars to these costs. I was more interested in breaking down the kits into the individual components to see if we could order parts one at a time and or find parts locally. For example, it is possible to buy a similar brushless DC motor like this one inside of Mexico, but we actually need something a little more powerful of the 48 volt air-cooled kind. We found one that can probably be shipped from the US for under $1,000. This particular motor represents the very bare minimum of power needed for our size of vessel. The next large cost component of the electric engine system would be the controller. The controller is a computer that presides over all the minute functions of the motor. And each kind of motor has to go with specific kind of controllers. After the motor and the controller, you're looking at having to get some individual items, such as the ignition, uh, throttle, all the nice big wires that go for wiring your batteries, the batteries themselves, and a nice big solar panel array. Right now, as we piece together our little 12 volt system for simply wiring some LED lights and perhaps a bilge pump, the thought of taking on a 48 volt monster truck electric propulsion project seems impossible. Also, one of our two stainless water tanks decided to start leaking. Could have been worse, at least the diesel tank is not leaking. <laughs> Oof, don't even say such things. With the help of viewers and patrons who sent us these items, we started wiring some lights. We have to make one continuous loop from the functioning battery to the light strip with switches and fuses in between. We found many different colors of wiring on board before pulling it all out, but right now we're only going with the good old red and black, positive and negative. and then all the wire needs to be connected properly from one terminal to the next. This is our typically imperfect art, 
of fashioning the connectors. Try and get them as tight as possible without breaking the sleeve like I'm doing. Ideally you have a heat gun for this, it's better. You have less chance of blackening the... We were gifted one board with six switches and two fuse panels with six fuses each. So we had six extra fuses. And we need a common ground. Well, you think that on this uh, fuse panel, that the one that they've supplied is too close? Yeah, it's just that one there. That's the common ground and that's the fuses and they're way too close for my liking. So we're going to remove this one, we're going to remove those ones, we're going to use th these two are going to become a common ground. Yeah, I'm going to just clip off all, all the plastic and just keep the two bars on this insulating material here. Even though it's brand new, you're still managing to treat it like a... Yeah, as usual. Still managing to cannibalize it. A ground would commonly be connected to the engine. We haven't done this yet, but it's coming. And we're thinking of connecting it to the keel, unless our viewers can tell us why that might be a bad idea. And this means we're ready for what? To start installing some lights. So this is our entire electrical system aboard in Esperado right now. We still need to find a breaker to be able to cut the power near the battery. And as we connect up the bilge pump and other lights, you'll see us make additions. The tedious construction took a little longer than we thought, and Robbie is into the second day of completing the circuit by connecting switches to the fuse board. These are pieces of wire up for connecting the fuse to the switches. He cleans and tidies as well as he can, and then we're on to connecting the LED light strip to the fuse board. The fuse board needs some fuses, so here they are. Pop them in and let there be light. The circuit is complete. On the other side of this, we have our charging system, which currently consists of a solar panel and a solar charge controller. Very simple to say the least. We had a viewer suggest putting a fuse between the solar panel and the charge controller, which is not a bad idea. The more fuses you put, the less chance you have of damaging individual system. So you're going to short out your panel if anything happens, if there's a short before your solar charge controller. In the middle of this illumination, Tony shows up at her boat with a mysterious package. It's an energizing item from another awesome viewer, name unknown. It's a Christmas miracle! 100 watt monocrystalline. Beauty. How did they know that this is just what we would be needing right now? Awesome. 